powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. We'll check in with Janelle in just a moment. In about two hours, Montana moves inside as the governor's stay-at-home order goes into effect at midnight tonight. This as America now tops 104,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. And we learned that highly contagious virus has now claimed more than 1,700 lives, one of those right here in Montana. As for the state's latest numbers, we now stand at 121 total cases. That's a jump of 31 cases since last night at this time. Those 121 cases, more than five times the number we had last Friday night when the state sat at 22 total cases. Yellowstone County saw nine more cases overnight, bringing the total to 23 total cases. Gallatin County still leads the state with 43 total cases. There have been seven hospitalizations and one death. And tonight, we now know that the first Montana death is out of Lincoln County. 77-year-old Jim Tomlin, a retired Washington State teacher, died yesterday afternoon in a Kalispell hospital. Tomlin's son, Scott, tells MTN News his father had developed a cough last weekend while on vacation. After returning home Sunday, he was taken to the ER Monday afternoon. By Wednesday, he was transported to Kalispell and was on a ventilator, and he died less than 24 hours later. Scott Tomlin tells us Jim's wife was able to speak to him over the phone once. However, he and his siblings live in Washington State. They're under a shelter-in-place order. Jim Tomlin had been a longtime teacher in Washington State before he and his wife moved to Montana upon retirement. He never stopped being an educator. He never stopped learning. He, he, he always wanted to teach. And, um, and if this is his last lesson, uh, hopefully it saves lives. He would be proud to know that he affected people enough to, to change their behavior for the better. Well, as we told you, of the 121 COVID-19 cases in the state, 23 are here in Yellowstone County. Q2's David Jay joins us now with more information on those patients. David? Well, Ressa, according to the Unified Health Command, an 80-year-old man is the only person hospitalized in Yellowstone County, and he's in stable and fair condition. It also has more than information about 22 of those patients. Two people traveled internationally, two uh, traveled domestically, seven had contact with someone who had a confirmed case of coronavirus, and with seven cases, the exposure is unknown. Also, four cases are still under investigation. It also includes 11 males and 11 females that have tested positive. Two teens and two in their 80s are on that list. The biggest age groups are eight people in their 20s and four in their 50s. Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton said, the rise in cases of COVID-19 in Yellowstone County is likely due in part to increased testing. Some of the individuals testing positive have unknown exposure and therefore we have made the assumption that we have community spread of COVID-19. And John Felton says, because of this, it's especially important to follow the governor's directive and stay home whenever possible and stay six feet away from others if you leave home. Russ? All right, thank you, David. Well, we received a lot of questions here at Q2 about enforcement of the governor's stay-at-home order. Janelle Slade standing by now in the newsroom with that information. Janelle? Ross, to get out in front of tonight's midnight implementation, we met up with Billings Police Chief Rich St. John to clarify some things. Now, St. John says the Billings Police Department is also inundated with calls because people are nervous, a little scared. The BPD, the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office, and the Laurel PD will all enforce the governor's order. People need to stay at their homes, only go out for what is considered essential work, necessary supplies and services, or to care for someone in need of care. Outdoor recreation is also permitted, but make sure to maintain social distancing. St. John says for those who blatantly disregard the law, police will document and refer incidents to the county attorney. The governor's order is not a martial law order by any way, shape or form. And I think some people are interpreting it as that. It's very clear uh, that there is some movement allowed and uh, we just hope people will voluntarily comply. St. John says law enforcement is not approaching this order with an enforcement mindset. He says this is a public health matter and we are all in as good community stewards. Russ. 
All right, thank you, Janelle. President Trump invoked the Defense Production Act against a major U.S. automaker before signing a massive phase three stimulus measure that could put cash in Americans' pockets as soon as next week. Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill with the latest. With a stroke of his pen, President Trump signed into law the more than $2 trillion bill to tackle the health and economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences, and putting America first. The package gives up to $1,200 directly to most working Americans, expands unemployment insurance, provides hundreds of billions to businesses both big and small, and delivers immediate financial relief to hospitals. I object on the basis that a quorum is not present. Kentucky Republican Thomas Massey pressed for a recorded vote on the measure. I came here this week to make sure our republic doesn't die in an empty chamber by unanimous consent. But party leaders got the bill over the finish line with a voice vote. The motion is adopted. President Trump bashed Congressman Massey's objection on Twitter. He also used Twitter to call on General Motors and Ford to produce more ventilators. I invoke the Defense Production Act to compel General Motors to accept, perform, and prioritize federal contracts for ventilators. Who will not hesitate to use the full authority of the federal government. Ford says it's pulling out all the stops, and GM says it's working around the clock to meet the urgent need. The president has ordered the Food and Drug Administration to reduce regulatory burdens to speed up the production of ventilators. He predicts the federal government will receive 100,000 additional ventilators over the next 100 days. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And President Trump also said any surplus ventilators that are not needed in the U.S. could possibly be sent to help other hard-hit allies like the United Kingdom and Italy. $13 billion of that record $2.2 trillion economic relief package is set aside for education. $41 million of that will go towards Montana education. State School Superintendent Elsie Arnson stopped by the station this afternoon. She answered the question on many people's minds, at what point will students not be able to satisfy graduation requirements? We have in rule and in statute uh, that it's up to the local trustees to be able to determine what graduation means. So that means that the requirements that are set can be waived by a trustee's motion and a vote. So it can happen differently across our state. Of course, with social distancing, it's going to be very challenging to have that great celebration that we have traditionally had in graduation. But I have no doubt that our communities are going to celebrate. All right, a meteorologist Ed McIntosh joining us now. Of course, uh, people have been ordered to stay at home, Ed, but that doesn't mean that they have to stay inside. And the weather should be pretty nice outside. A little taste of spring, but may not last, huh? That's right. Certainly we have it for the weekend. And then as we start getting into early next week, we'll start to see a shift. Definitely looks like we're going to fall into some cooler temperatures. The question right now is just how much cooler will it be? And that's going to really uh, affect a large portion of the country. Only the southwest portion of the state is trending towards above average temperatures for the first week of April. Meantime, as far as precipitation goes, it's kind of a mixed bag. Looking at much of the eastern portion of the country drier than average. And that could be true into the Pacific Northwest as well, but portions of eastern Montana at least leaning towards a little wetter than average. So a lot of questions to be answered there. But one thing for sure, the weekend forecast looks pretty good all the way around. We'll take a look at those details coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Ed. Earlier today, word came down with changes regarding recreational outside activities across Billings. q Scott Breen has more on that. Well, that's right, gang, hanging out down by the Yellowstone River among the trails and a handful of people trying to catch a little fishing. It's one of the few, all of a sudden, as of this afternoon, recreational places still open to the public. City of Billings this afternoon announcing effective immediately all city playgrounds, tennis courts, volleyball courts, and basketball courts are closed until further notice due to the possibility of spreading COVID-19. Now to clarify, city parks themselves plus spaces and trails are open for public use. It's just specifically the playgrounds, the tennis courts, volleyball, and basketball courts that are closed until further notice. So keep that in mind as you head out this weekend. It's okay to get outside, get a little exercise and some fresh air. You just can't be specifically in those city areas that were mentioned moments ago. That'll do it from down here at the Yellowstone River. I will be back coming up in sports just a few minutes from now.
All right, thank you, Scott. Well, what risks do pregnant women face? It's a question that seems to have no clear answer as doctors and nurses navigate what they know so far about the virus. As Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, hospitals like the Billings Clinic now restrict visitors and only allow one support person in the labor room. Well, I naturally had some questions about COVID-19 and pregnancy because I myself am in my second trimester and staying at home, working at home. But because there's so many questions out there and so many unknowns, I decided to talk to a doctor at the Billings Clinic to get some perspective. Unfortunately, right now, we don't know a lot about COVID-19 and pregnancy. And that's probably the most troubling part. OBGYN Amy Hopstad says there's just not enough data coming out of China about the virus so far. Um, what we do know with other respiratory infections, things like influenza and prior SARS outbreaks, pregnant women are more vulnerable and tend to get sicker. Um, so we, you know, we're taking extra precautions to keep our patients safe. Pregnant women experience a decrease in their immune system, and that naturally makes them vulnerable. Your immune system goes through a lot of changes in pregnancy, really to protect the developing fetus. Um, and so your immune system kind of gets put on the back burner a little bit. Um, that and there probably are some other physiological changes that happen in the lungs and things like that and make respiratory illnesses especially potentially more serious in pregnant people. So because of that, Billings Clinic is taking precautions. Now we have more visiting restrictions than we ever used to have in that, you know, kid, kiddos under 18 aren't allowed. You get one support person and that person for now is allowed in the labor room and postpartum and, and can stay here with you. So for now, safety, they say, is the best policy and tell health professionals no more. Honestly, all of us are a little bit uneasy with it just because we're hearing other case reports from other cities that are harder hit. And it's hard for everyone, so just to be careful. The, the fortunate thing is most pregnant women are young and healthy, and for the most part, should do fine. So while there are some restrictions at hospitals here, Hopstad says she doesn't anticipate Montana doing what other states have done, like New York, where no support person is allowed in the labor and delivery room. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. All right, thank you, Andrea. And COVID-19 is also weighing on people's minds. We talked with a neuropsychologist at Billings Clinic who has some helpful advice for anyone who's struggling with anxiety. Trying to keep some normalcy in their life mm -hmm. as best they can in these, you know, kind of strange times and to recognize that the emotions they're having are normal reactions to abnormal experiences. And so really looking at you know, whatever they can do in their day to day life, keeping some type of a structure and a routine that they norm, you know, that they can do within their daily life, making sure that they're still contacting people and staying connected with people um, via phone, via, you know, FaceTime, whatever technologies that they can utilize in that way. Um, you know, taking care of their personal health, so making sure they're eating healthy and trying to stay as, well away from as much processed food as possible, getting in movement and exercise, even if that's, you know, doing things at home inside, but preferably if they can just get outside, walk around the block. All right, good advice. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, everything seems to be changing right now. That even includes simple visits to the doctor's office. Some important health advice ahead from one of St. V's top docs. Plus, we're going to offer a solution if cabin fever hits you hard this weekend. We'll hear from Jay Cohn. And in sports, we'll hear from a former Billings wrestler who is now pinning opponents on the college mats. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.